Alrighty, welcome back to Let's Play Crisis Core Reunion. We're getting right into the finale here. We stopped yesterday just short of the end because we didn't want to have to rush it. So now we can just uh, go forth and see the end of the game, which is probably the best part of the game. Very, very memorable and great part. Um, I think the the scene, the fight scene with Genesis and Angeal and Sephiroth is like the most people, oh my, the thing people know the most, but the ending is probably the other thing that most people have seen. Um, but yeah, I, the biggest thing that I want to see is how they do the DMW thing, because that's my favorite part of the ending, is how they, Sorry, uh... Cloud. Time for another break. As you can see, my friend's sick. Let's get to it! As you can see. Run for it. Um, my favorite part of the ending is how they implement the DMW into it, and I'll talk more when we get there, but... Conflict resolved. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how they do that and how it works in this version. Because it'll feel a bit different than it did in the PSP version, I would imagine. But hopefully it still gives you that same feeling that the uh, that the PSP version gives you. I don't know what I want to equip. Come on, man. Hmm. Maybe I'll do an attack up. Two attack up so I can combine them. Sorry, he went that way. Guess I need to go that way now. How's it going, Coco? Activating combat mode. Out of the oh. way. One of my favorite F F7 enemies. to get down there. Oh, this way. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty excited to try the post game on hard. I never did play the original on hard. Um, I played the original on normal and did everything during my, my first Let's Play of the game. And we need to make the decision today, once we beat the game, on whether we're gonna do hard mode as part of the Let's Play or not. Training hard, I hope. You better believe it. So, we'll see what we can choose, but we'll at least be doing Minerva. Prove your honor to me. Just depends on uh, what the trophies are and stuff, so we'll make that decision here. But regardless of what we do for the Let's Play, we will be doing everything on hard and stuff on Twitch, so. And I might even go further than that and do some other stuff. Because I'm, I'm really enjoying the game, so I'd like to try to push it and come up with some cool stuff we can do. But we'll see. The infinite mystery, the gift of the goddess, is what the three men seek, but their fates are scattered by war. One becomes a hero, one wanders the land, and the last is taken prisoner. But the three are still bound by a solemn oath to seek the answer together once again. I don't remember 
if you're supposed to go that way or the other way. Star materia. This is the way we're supposed to go. It, it probably is. I mean, it's Mr. Smiley. I don't remember this. Activating combat There's a bunch of different ones, too. Different things going on. Like it, like it says in the title, if it's in the original game, it's fine. I don't mind if you spoil it. I just don't want to know about anything new that this version has until we see it. Then you can tell me it's new. then you don't have to worry about it. Should be... Anymore. Mako? Or is he just say Mako to all of them? This one doesn't even have a... That's it. Oh, yeah. 
Because I remember this. The elevator's not here yet. Well, maybe not. We got some more to go. Some kind of console? The pedestal has seven indentations. If I set goddess materia in these indentations, that door will open. Is that it? Wow, genius. Why do we need... Why do we need a hint for this? a tutorial for the literal final dungeon. Final dungeon of the game. Let's make sure people don't get lost. Activating combat mode. is over here. Yep. Walked right past it. How did Genesis get in there without the materia? I mean, this is more just a gameplay thing, so it's fine, but yeah, I don't even understand like what any of this is or why it's down here. But, you know, just a gameplay thing, I guess. I can, I can suspend my disbelief <laughs> for this for the final dungeon. actor sounds like a Dolph Roxas. Taking you down oh my god, you're right. Here we go. Taking you down and this is gonna stay. Swing stronger than yours. The light of doom. 
Genesis is up ahead. I'm sure of it. Okay, I was right. I remembered this room being like the final room. For whatever reason. Just kind of remembered it. I don't remember what this elevator is for, though. Genesis. Time for a showdown. My soul, corrupted by vengeance, hath endured torment to find the end of the journey. In my own salvation, you're late. Loveless again. You have succeeded, Angel's spirit, and carry a part of Sephiroth within you. Thus, the three friends are reunited once again. And Loveless is reenacted. No! Open your eyes, Genesis! When the War of the Beasts brings about the world's end... I... I've come here to help you. The Goddess descends from the sky. Wings of light and dark spread afar. She guides us to bliss, her gift everlasting. What is that? The gift of the Goddess. A heavenly boon found only in Benora. I thought the cells were the gift. There are various interpretations. I don't understand. Don't worry, he doesn't either. To ponder the mystery is in itself a gift. We will all join the life stream. You are no exception. The planet has become my guardian. <laughs> Keep talking to me. Don't let it take over. You're not a monster, you're one of us! Yeah, so I don't actually get any of this. I've never really looked into it. I don't get what the big thing is. Maybe it's a giant apple. I don't know. But yeah, I don't actually fully understand why he becomes Mecha Godzilla. Because, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't even know if it's like up to interpretation or if there's actually a right answer, but whatever. Activating combat mode. Final boss, I guess. They needed a final boss. I don't know, like maybe... Brace yourself. Maybe he's like... Show me the true power. Using of the... Soldier. The power of the life stream that he got when he fell down. Like maybe it's similar to Sephiroth where he fell down and traveled the life stream, but it was just for the last two hours instead of seven years. But I don't know. I'm not sure there really is a right answer. I know that, like, he's pretty. At this point. Even he doesn't really understand what's going on, like, he's pretty much just completely lost it. Because he knows that he's gonna degrade no matter what. Now, so like, I think part of it is just he's lost his mind, but as to why he becomes this, I don't know. It's either 
because the game needed a final boss. Or there's some kind of like special power down here that he takes. The gift of the goddess, I suppose, but I don't know if you actually know what that is. Long ago, catastrophe struck this planet. Your ancestors. They do they do talk about the weapons a lot. So I do wonder if maybe it has something to do with that. And it show, it showed Emerald Weapon. Your kind would multiply as if nothing happened. So maybe that's the idea is like he combines with a weapon or something. Maybe there's like a weapon down here. So what exactly does that have to do with you? Don't you see? We have the ancient called Genova. Unearthed from a two thousand year old. And that's why he says the, the planets the become his guardian project. or whatever. The goal of the Genova project was, in essence, to create a human being possessing the great powers of Acetra. Thus they created. But I don't even me. know how he got control of it. I guess the name Avatar would kind of make sense. Concentrate. I'm feeling it. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look it up and see if there's any answers anywhere else. Because the game, I don't think, gives you much to go off of. Concentrate. I'm feeling it. <laughs> the planet also really likes Loveless, so it just helps him. That makes sense. You guys stop. But yeah, at some point, mo pretty much after Hollander dies, he goes from being like, we can still fix this. We just need Cloud and the S gene, and then we can we can fix all this. Then once Hollander dies, he kind of just completely submits to like the gift of the goddess is the only way I can survive. So he just kind of like goes insane. So like that part I get, but I don't really get the final boss. Which, like, again, I don't know if we're even supposed to, <laughs> or if it's just we need a final boss. But it is interesting, with with the Emerald Weapon being in the background of that first area, I'm, I kind of wonder if that's the hint that this is some kind of other weapon. And the fact that they specifically mentioned the weapons earlier, for seemingly no reason. That might be... That might be the reason that they kind of talk about the weapons before. Oh, so that this makes more sense. How about dinner tonight? Sorry, I've got work. They just told me. Get ready. Hmm, too bad. You want me to talk to your boss? I don't recommend that. My boss can be pretty scary. Bringing out the big guns. You can do it. Uh oh. I didn't get to hit him. Max HP, I probably would have died. Bye now. Ah, so many cutscenes. What are you doing here? Don't know. I was just told to take leave at Del Sol. And you? Good timing. My supervisor gave me leave as well. So I figured I should take in a little sun. My leave wasn't an order from the director. Leave is leave. Forget about work. 
Spread your wings a little. Well, see ya. Wings and feathers, I've had enough. Good timing, huh? Alright, Sisne just really wants to be a part of this fight. Brace yourself! You can do it, Zach. Yeah, I'm on fire now! Just really want to do the Sisne dance. A thousand times during this fight. Just want to level up like four times during this fight. Disappears. It's cool, but it's weird. I remember what happens if you break a sword first. My soul. Corrupted by vengeance. Yeah, so this this tree is something. I mean, th this is the gift of the goddess. Whatever it is, he found. You know, he he found this on his own, I guess, and this is like something. But whether or not we get like more background lore about this somewhere else, I'm not actually sure. Hath endured torment to find the end of the journey. In my own salvation. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, and your we'll probably get some info on it. Someone probably leave a comment about it that knows more about Does it. Does this mean you knew from the beginning? Yeah! <laughs> it's a funky bonsai tree. Stand and fight. Soldier first class. Zack! Why does he suddenly look not degraded? Why is everyone always pushing things on me? Yeah. Well, he is trying to kill you, Zack. Yeah, I'm a bit I'm a bit confused. Like the tree fixed his degradation. So why didn't he just go with this from the start? Like also the song is a jam. Uh yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I mean he did say like if we can't get Cloud, then the Gift of the Goddess is my only chance. So I guess he, like, knew this was a thing, but why not just go with this first? Combat This does kind of show the evil nature of Genesis, though, because it seemed like before he just turned his back on Shinra because he was dying, but now he's, like, cured and he's still like, yeah, I'm gonna kill you. I don't know, Genesis is so weird. Like, I don't even understand his motive. Like, his motive for leaving Shinra makes sense because he's dying, but then, like, now he's just like, well... I don't know. Loveless is the play, so die. <laughs> I need to do more research on Genesis. I really don't know much about him. Yeah, maybe it was a long shot, but he just went for it now that he had no other option. I mean, that makes sense. Like, he didn't know it would work, but... This was his last option, so he just went for it, and it actually did work. But then Zack kills him anyways. Big rip.
This looks very... fuzzy. Yeah, the whole goddess thing is kind of annoying, because... <laughs> Final Fantasy VII has done better without gods and goddesses. It's like planets and their power. But... I don't know enough about Minerva to actually, like, say if it's... if she fits or not. Then again, yeah, I guess it could all be in his head. But then we fight her later, so what's that? <laughs> Just because gameplay. I don't know. Then there's also a thing in Dirge where they talk about him maybe still being alive, I think. So, like, there's more to it. For now, though, just with just what the game gives us, I think... It's fair to say it's at least confusing and not really that great. Like Genesis in general. This isn't really Shinra that great. attacked us. Save your strength. I got some help from him over there. Not the doggo. It's you. Director! <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, that part's cool just because it's Zack finally coming to terms with things. Okay. Let's eat. Everybody eat. <laughs> Sorry I'm not the real thing, but Is it good? Uh, yeah. The gift of the goddess. This apple? Huh? I'm Gio. The dream came true. Zach's like, I don't get it. <laughs> How are you? I wish I knew where you were. It's already been four years now. This is the 89th letter that I've sent to you, but I don't even know where to send them anymore. I really hope that this final letter that I'm writing 
gets to you. By the way, the flowers are selling very well. They make everyone so happy. Thanks to you, Zack. Aerith. Big Sag. Four years? What do you mean, final? <laughs> well, she's been writing for four years, man. She's sick of writing. Too. You got that? Yeah, I, I personally don't know much about the Genesis stuff, but this part is so good. This must be an important matter if they are sending the two of us. <laughs> Apparently the subject will become our brother. Is that so? But will he accept his fate willingly? Not exactly sure how they knew he was there. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, so that's like Dirge of Cerberus stuff. Which is really cool that they Even if put the that morrow there. is barren of promises, nothing shall forestall my return. To become the dew that quenches the land. To spare the sands, the seas, the skies. I offer thee this silent sacrifice. Genesis return confirmed. The army's mobilizing. Find the targets before they do. Understood. The army won't be as subtle. I want them alive. You hear me? You're going to save Zack's life. Of course. I haven't even told him my real name. Help them. Sisne. I have letters for Zack. 88 of them. So once again, we see like the promise between Sung and Zack, which is cool. I'm just kidding. He's been holding the letters. You know I wouldn't do that to you. And here's the famous truck scene. We're friends, right? in a haystack this size. There's no mission that's impossible for the Turks, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, Sung apparently has something to give him. Who, the target? Mm. So we're couriers now. Delivering packages to fugitives, huh? <laughs> Nothing. You? 
Ever crisis, but it'll all be chibi models, and it'll totally lose its luster. <laughs> but the idea is there, at least. We'll get all these famous cutscenes, but we'll be wearing wedding dresses and swimsuits. Price of freedom is steep. <laughs> Embrace your dreams. And whatever happens, protect your honor. As soldier! Come and get it! Activating combat mode. Gotta go. Activating combat mode.
I'll be here. For the... both of us. Both... of us? That's right. You're gonna... You're gonna... My living legacy. My honor, my dreams. They're yours now. And then we get <laughs> We got the Gagaga scene We got the The video Gagaga scene So now you just have to put The uh 
the audio from the Lee Gun Gaga under the video. We got the meat. Yeah, this cut's kind of instant. <laughs> I'm trying to talk because copyright. It'll probably still get copyright grabbed. Yeah, it's a bit jarring. If you want to be a hero, you need to have dreams. Gotta have dreams. <laughs> Suddenly Cloud gets up and starts dancing. But yeah, I don't remember... I don't remember if anything else happens here. This video looks good, but good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. Um, Zach. I don't think it really looks any better than it did on PSP. Still, like maybe even, like I don't think they did a very good job upscaling these cutscenes. To be honest. Some of them look kind of blurry. I mean, it's fine. Like, I don't care, but I just point it out. She said that this guy frightened her. Is that what they said? The AI upscaled it? Because it doesn't really look that good. But it must feel so good up there. Granted. Yeah, I mean, it was like 250p. So to get it to this size, yeah, is impressive on its own, I guess. But like watching these scenes on YouTube, like the PSP scenes on YouTube, always looked pretty good. If you go back and watch them, it does feel good. Either way. I mean, like, see Eric? Say hi for they me. could have completely redone the scenes. They chose to upscale it instead. So. Take that for what you will, but... No, they look good, it's just... Some of them look a bit blurry. Hey. On my 2K screen. I became a hero. But it's good enough, yeah. I'm not, like, complaining, I'm just pointing it out. And, you know, technically they could have completely redone them, but I, I think it's still fine. Anyway, so yeah, I I really like the ending. I, I, I think I feel the same way now as I did when I beat Original Crisis Core. And that's that, like, I don't really like some of the notes of the story in terms of, like, how they tell it. The whole thing with... Zack becoming a hero, I suppose, is fine, because he does, like, save Cloud. But the whole thing with, like, Genesis and Angeal and stuff and Hollander isn't really my favorite part of the Final Fantasy VII lore. It's all a bit... We needed some bad guys for this game, so let's, like, figure out how it work, how to work it in, and it just doesn't really feel as, like, connected. But what I do love is what this game adds to Final Fantasy VII. I love that we get this scene of, like, like, there's a lot of ways they could have done it. They could have just had Zack die, and then Cloud is, like, like, looks at him, and he takes his sword or something, and then that's it. But I love how they, like, really give us the sense of, like, oh, this is why Cloud, like, actually went insane. Like, the way he, like, takes his head and puts it on his chest... And then Cloud bringing his head back up and he has the blood on his head. Like, there's so much great, like, imagery with, like, that whole scene. So I really love that. Um, and I love, like, the... Rela I talked before about the relationship between Sung and Aerith and how we kind of get some of that now. And we understand Sung's feelings towards Aerith given his promise to Zack and stuff and how he was never able to give him the letters. Like, there's all these little things that you, now you can play Final Fantasy VII and be like, oh yeah, that makes more sense now. So, although you can point at some stuff and be like, man, did they, like, retcon that? 
there's there's a lot of really nice little details, um, especially with Sephiroth, like I said at the beginning of the playthrough. I think Sephiroth gets the most out of this game in terms of character development. We get to see so much more of, like, him genuinely being sad over his friends and the result of all of this. And then, like, him going insane makes a bit more sense because we know now that Genesis told him about the Genova uh, project. And so, like, there's a lot of really cool stuff with Sephiroth. Um, so, I, you know... I feel the same way as I did before, where, like, I like what this game adds to Final Fantasy VII. The story itself is okay, the writing isn't great, but, like, it's goofy and fun and I enjoy it. Uh, so yeah. Now, on to the Reunion side of things. What did I think about Reunion? I thought it was fantastic. Um, the game plays so much better now, it's so much quicker, you can easily, like, get through it in a few hours because of how much quicker the game is and the loads, and you can fly through missions and get super strong super fast. So it's just a really fun experience. It, it's, it, it takes the original and just makes it less of a slog, and it's just this really fun, quick, get strong quick, you know, just a blast to play, so... I really enjoyed this uh, remaster. Could they have done it better? Yeah. They could have redone all the cutscenes. They could have not used so many remake assets. But for a game that we didn't think we'd ever get, I, I think the I think what it comes down to is like either we don't get a Crisis Core remaster, or we get a Crisis Core remaster, but it has the same PSP cutscenes and a bunch of remake assets. And if it's a choice between no remaster and this one, I'll definitely take this one. Like, this was awesome for what it was. It's not full price. It's a quick and easy, fun romp through the story. It'll probably help set up Remake Part 2 more, depending on what they do with Zack and the Dirge crew and everything. So, I think this was, like, definitely warranted. A, a lot of Square Enix projects feel like they're not warranted like the pixel remasters <laughs> and it's just like they're getting it out for money this didn't feel like that this felt like a welcome addition to the final fantasy 7 series it's something we've always wanted it's something that helps set up part two it's a okay price for what it is so i'm happy with it they could have done more but i'm happy with it so and if you're a fan of the original Crisis Core, you'll be a fan of this for sure. That I can say without a doubt, so. Uh, it cost, um, it was 50, right? I think, or 60. 50, yeah. I bought it a while ago, <laughs> so I forgot. I knew it wasn't full price. So yeah. No, this was um, this was a great, great remaster. I had a lot of fun with it, just because playing Crisis Core without the slog is super fun. After playing the original, what was it, two years ago? This felt like a breath of fresh air. Like, oh man, it's so much faster and easier to play. And the... the the new combat system is so nice. And being able to do the missions really fast is so nice. And, you know, overall the DMW thing is just so much better. And it was, I mean, for using a bunch of remake assets and completely redoing the engine, it was surprisingly unbroken. Apparently there's some like cuts, there's like some speedrun skips, so like the game isn't completely airtight. But in terms of my casual playthrough, nothing broke. It was it was fine all the way through, so I can give it props for that. So yeah, good stuff. And I never get sick of this soundtrack. Freaking love Crisis Core soundtrack. Never get sick of this soundtrack. 
Yeah, now we wait to see if they do Dirge, which they said they're not going to yet. But that doesn't mean never. What's my favorite track? Probably this one. I think this is the one that I have on my playlist. My personal playlist. This is a really good song. There's that other one too. Price of Freedom actually is probably my favorite. Flower Blooming in the Slums, which is this, but I think it's a different version of it uh, in Price of Freedom. But Price of Freedom, I think, takes the cake. That song is so good. I think that's the one I listen to the most. And it's unique to this game. It's not a redo of a 7-track, I think. Pretty sure. That would be really cool if we got Dirge of Cerberus in between Part 2 and Part 3. But, from what I heard from the interviews, they won't do Dirge until after Remake Part 3, if they ever do it. So. But that would, I mean, in terms of continuity or like the, the timeline that would be perfect to do dirge right after part three it's just confusing because they don't because of the way that the remake is they're not they're not coming out and saying like specifically what continuity everything fits into so like it'll be confusing to casual players what fits where. Like this, if you're not, if you don't understand Final Fantasy VII lore, this game is really confusing because a lot of people are like, is this part of the remake? So, but they can't really come out and say like, it's definitely is or definitely not because they're keeping everything up in the air for the remake so that we're left on our toes to, you know, so. It'll be weird. We gotta wait till the remake's completely done and then they can finally say like, okay, these are the two continuities. What this? Remake opening scene? for some reason. <laughs> it's funny to see this because we literally proved earlier that that's not the same street. So I feel like they just put that there to, like, help other people <laughs> that don't know the lore just to be like, oh, so that's where Final Fantasy VII starts. Because I don't see why else you would put that there other than just an advertisement. <laughs> advertisement for the remake. But no, that, that's just kind of funny because earlier we, like, proved that the remake part of that, the city is different. But 
it's not that it doesn't fit into the continuity because it's seven years later. So like they could have just changed the street, but anyways, it's just funny. So we literally watched that same exact scene earlier in the playthrough. So yeah, they did say final fantasy seven, not final fantasy seven remake. So I guess that helps us out a little bit. It's just it's just funny because there's the original game and then there's the compilation of Final Fantasy 7 which is everything else and then there's the remake but because the remake is the way it is and everyone has their their theories about it being connected to the original and all that stuff it's hard to like just say 100% this is separate. And also, we don't know... Like, Zack is a character in the remake. Whether or not he's alive or not is irrelevant. He's a character, which means Crisis Core in some way, shape, or form happened. But was it this Crisis Core? Was it a different Crisis Core? You know, like, which events from Crisis Core happened before the remake that we just don't see? And how is it different, right? So what would be really funny is if they released Crisis Core Remake. And then we could just say like, okay, this is Crisis Core in Final Fantasy VII. And then there's Crisis Core Remake in Final Fantasy VII. I don't think they'd ever do that. But yeah, but it's cool that they just put Final Fantasy VII there. Because that kind of tells us like, still original canon. You know, there's no goofiness like, oh, this is actually the remake version. So that's that's nice that they did that. Uh, okay. So we want... Start a new game. Data will be carried over. Oh, your Buster Sword proficiency carries over. 